Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, yes, the last preseason game was yesterday. And uh, got a little man in the back. I know you can hear him. After I already told him I need to be quiet. But, you know, you can't make a five-year-old be quiet. <laughs> but anyway, um, with that being said, Trey Lance threw five picks in the game. Five. He did have he did have that nice little that's, run for a touchdown, I talk, I that's what, uh, but um, he just it's like he got better from the first preseason game to the second, and then he kind of reverted back. It's almost like when somebody teaches you something, and when you get into a pressure situation, you revert back to your old habits. That's basically what happened. Now, for all those people that kept saying, oh, we don't need Dak Prescott this, Dak Prescott that, Dak Prescott sucks, or what the haters call him, Dak Trash Cot, or whatever they call him. Let you know right now that this quarterback position is not an easy position to play. After seeing what, or the lack thereof, of Trey Lance, he is not unseating Dak Prescott. So, they need to sign Dak Prescott. They need to have him on his roster. They need to sign CeeDee Lamb, get him in the building so we can get ready to play Cleveland. We only got two weeks to the season starts. Period. What? I'm doing a video. So, yes. I'm trying to wrap my mind around the fact that this whole Trey Lance thing and everybody just thinks that oh he's, he's this and he's that and he's great Hi. he's still got a lot a lot to learn a lot to develop now Cowboys got a <laughs> they got a choice to make are you going to keep him on the roster you going to cut him because he actually makes more money than the, the Rush does so, you can try to trade him, but after seeing his performance, who's going to want him? Nobody's going to want him to be their number one. So, it is what it is. The Cowboys got him. They might as well just keep him since you're paying him and keep trying to develop him. If he doesn't get better from next season or, you know, try to play him next preseason, next year, if he doesn't progress, then get rid of him. But you got to re-sign Dak Prescott, period. He is your guy going forward. Until you get a young stud in the draft, wow, that can eventually be Dak wow, Prescott's that's... heir, <laughs> bless you. You have to re-sign Dak Prescott, period. Now, some of the young guys in this game, bought them some time on this team. Now, roster cut down is on Tuesday. They have to cut from 90 to 53. It is going to be a hard cut in certain positions, i.e. running back and uh, DB. But then I thought about it because De'Ron Bland is out now six to eight weeks, which brings another thing to my attention. It's just, are we cursed by the football guys? Because... It just seems like we can never get all these guys on the field together to be dominant, to see what it looks like when we're full force. For example, y'all remember when we had Amari Cooper and then we still had CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup? Those guys really, all three of those guys never really played together. If you go back and look at it, all three of them never played the game. It was always like Amari was out with something, or 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 um, or Michael Gallup was out with an injury. All three of them, ne we never got to see the dominance. We never got to see a matchery. That's the part that sucks. We never got to see them all three play. Just like we ain't seen um, Trey Diggs and Deron Bland together, and we won't. <laughs> for the first six to eight weeks, that's the part. When I saw that, when I saw that come out yesterday, right before the preseason game, 
I said, come on. Come on. But, thank God it's not a season in injury. A season ending injury. Thank God it's not. But, you still got six to eight weeks. Now, the caveat to that is that it also gives the opportunity for some young guys to step up and do some things. We got some young studs on this team that kind of showed out in, in these preseason games. We had, a, we had at least one interception in every game, in every preseason game. And I think we had like four of them in the, in, in the first game. So this Mike Zimmer defense is going to be crucial, especially when we get our starters in there. You add the starters in there with what we already have. We're, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, we're gonna be a beast on defense. Now, hopefully, um, it's it's just a fracture. Since it's just a fracture in his foot, but the thing about it is, when you're a DB, your feet is everything. You gotta cut. You gotta dig your feet into the ground. So you want to make sure that fractured toe or foot is fully healed before he comes back. That's the reason why they gave the timeline of six to eight weeks. Hopefully it's on the shorter realm of those six to eight weeks than the latter. But we'll see how that goes. You don't, you don't, you also don't want to rush that injury back. Because if you rush it back, then you can um, it's a higher risk of re-injury. You don't want to do that. Definitely don't want to re-injure something like that. But as far as his roster goes, um, I want to see Deuce Vaughn make this team. Because what I saw out there in preseason was a young back that got better. I remember his rookie year last year, you know, he was just running through stuff and just getting stonewalled and things of that nature. He'll he'll cut, jump through one, he'll get a couple of yards and then get stonewalled. Right now, in this game, in these preseason games, he showed some growth. He showed some strength. He may be 5'5", but he ain't little. What I mean by that is, that, that little boy's strong. He a little muscle. He a little muscle. He came in there. He jump cut it. Made a couple of guys miss. And then, when he got contact, he still churned for a couple of more yards. That was almost Zeke-ish. That was something that you expect out of Seek because he's a bigger back. But I like what I saw. And unfortunately, with all the running backs we have, you can't keep everybody. The only two locks that we know right now is Rico Dowdle and, and, and Ezekiel Elliott. Those are the only two that we know that are a lock for this roster. I know the team really likes Malik Davis. Malik Davis could be the guy that they keep. Um, we know Hunter Hunter Lipke more than likely is going to stay on the team, but he's more like a fullback, not necessarily halfback, but it still counts in that category. You can keep Deuce Vaughn and put him on a practice squad, but I feel like if you let him go in free agency, I mean, if you let him, if you cut him, another team's going to get him. You just got to find a. I don't know, a position that you can go shorter at, maybe. Because you're cut, you're probably going to go long at, at wide receiver and and uh, running back. But you got to compensate for that. You have to figure out what other... Um, where, wherever you're stacked at somewhere else. Now, linebacker, you look at linebacker, we got some good linebackers, too. Some guys you don't want to, you don't want to get rid of there. Cornerback, some guys you don't want to get rid of there. Paul had that pick six. Some guys were looking good at preseason. Like, what do you do? Is it a situation where if it's a guy that you really like, that you got to cut, that you know that you're going to bring them back, you know, offer them more money for the practice squad? That might that might get them to stay. Because even if another team tries to get them, it's their choice whether they want to go or not. It's not like they're being traded. It's still a choice. They can decline it and stay with Calvin. Um, wide receiver, we already know. We already know. You, you 
go. You got Lamb there. You got. I don't have the roster with me right now, so I might do another video where I have the roster with me where I go down everything. But you look at receiver. You got CD Lamb. You got Cooks. You got um, Tolbert, Brooks, and Florinor. That's so CD Lamb, Brandon Cooks. Um, Tobert, Brooks, Turpin, and Florinor. That's six. That's your six receivers right there. Somebody's going to be an active for game day, and they're going to have to go back and forth and figure that out. Who's going to be active? Who's going to be inactive? They can go back and forth with that. Now, offensive line, now that Chuma Doka is out, on IR and Bostic, and it gives it gives some other guys a chance to make the roster too. We already know both of our draft picks made it. They're more than likely might be starters. Um, they haven't said word whether Cooper BB or or Brock Hoffman got the starting position, but either way, we're gonna be good in my opinion. This offensive line, you look at that offensive line, even even the second even the secondary line. Not even with the starters, the secondary line. We're creating holes for these running backs. Now, some people think that the Cowboys are going to go get another running back. I don't know. They might be content with what they have. Because if they can create holes and, and play well with what they have, we haven't seen Zeke yet. Well, this new era, see. Some people think that because of the um, bland injury that they're going to go out and get another. Um, that they're going to get another corner. I don't think so. And even even Jerry Jones said um, pre-game before the preseason game, um, they asked him. They was like, you know, um, are you going to go out and get somebody? He was like, probably not, because we got a stable young guys that can step in. And he was like, you know, he's going to be out for such a short time. I don't feel like we need to bring anybody in. But if they go out there and these guys don't do what they want them to do, then quite possibly they can bring somebody in. Um, you're not going to get you're not going to get a uh, you're not going to get a starter. Right. You're going to get somebody that is. Good enough to to, to band aid that that position until Bland comes back. Now, it would have been clutch if Stephon Gilmore didn't sign with the daggone Vikings, but the Vikings gave him some good money, so there was no way he was gonna um, turn down that contract. They gave him money; the Cowboys were not. Now he would have came back to the Cowboys because he likes the Cowboys and because Brandon Cooks is on the team. His best friend is on the team. So, of course, he would have came back. But, you know, the Cowboys didn't want him. But they can use him now. It's always like that. Injuries always rear their ugly heads. But uh, let me know. Um, I don't have, like I said, I don't have the roster with me right now because I'm driving. But let me know who, who your final 53 is, who you want to see stay, who you want to see go, um, things of that nature. Like I said, I'm more than likely to do another video before um, – Tuesday before the cut downs and actually go through the roster and um, look at the young guys and see um, who will stay, who I think that they might bring back on the, um, on the uh, practice squad. But until then, in between time, in the meantime, it's your boy E2Blue, always keeping it real. Y'all have a great Sunday.